Hey guys, remember when I said this? Tail. And if you have any questions, um, please put them down in the comments and I will get to them on this Friday's FAQ video. But I'm hoping to cover everything, but I, I won't. So today I'm gonna to go over all those things that I didn't cover, your questions about drip and some mistakes in drip irrigation and watering I've made uh, over the years. Coming up. Hey, welcome back. So today, yes, not only are we covering everything I didn't cover in the last drip video, but we are also going to reveal the three winners of our Wise Orchard giveaway. One from Facebook, one from Instagram, and one from here on YouTube. So we will get to that at the end of the video. Right now, I want to go over all of the drip questions you guys had, and uh, there were a lot of great ones. So the first one that I don't normally think of because of where I live is winterizing your system. Now, I've never even been where it freezes. I've never felt freezing temperatures, and I've only seen it actually snowing one time, and that wasn't here. <laughs> so winterizing is not something I normally think about, but fortunately I've got all of you out there to make sure I cover everything. And so I did some research into what you do with drip irrigations in the winter time, and it's pretty simple. First, you wanna drain the head, the timer, all of the things that are right there at the spigot. So I, what I would do is probably take in everything before the adapter from the three quarter inch down to the half inch. Take all of that in the house or in the garage or wherever you store things like that, empty them out, make sure there's no water, and just don't let them freeze. As far as the rest of the system, you wanna flush it. So you'd take off the end caps and make sure all that water drains out. Now, some people use air compressors, and the one warning that they had about that is to make sure the air compressor is on really low because you don't want to pop off any of the drip emitters. So that's an optional step, they said. And then once everything is uh, drained out, put the caps back on, and that's pretty much all that's necessary to winterize your system. Another popular question was how to use drip in containers, and how do you use drip on several containers? So there's a couple of ways in just watering containers, depending on the size of the container. If it's a wide container and you have several things, what I do is I just take the, uh, the tubing with the little holes and I just spiral them around in the container. Now, you probably in a container that's, you know, I'd say 18 inches or less, you just need a couple little spirals. And you wanna hold those in place with landscape staples or some bent over wire. And that's gonna be good for that. Now, to get it from the half inch tubing into the container, you can use a piece of drip tubing that does not have any holes in it. It's just kind of like a leader that you would use with drip emitters. So take the little coupling, push it into the half inch, put your black hose onto that, or tube onto that, run that to the container, then another coupling, put on the drip tube, spiral it around, put an end goof plug on the end of that uh, spiral, and then you're good to go. Now, if it's a pot that's got maybe one thing in it, maybe it's a, um, a bucket or a 12 inch or less pot, and you've got one squash plant, you know, some a bush beans, whatever you have in there, you really don't need to use the tubing. You could just use an emitter. And if that's the case, I would say probably a one gallon per hour emitter. It depends on how long you run your system. So, um, but one gallon should be more than enough to handle a pot that size. And it's the same thing, you'd use the black tube that doesn't have the holes in it up to where you want it. Put the emitter on the end of that. You don't need a goof plug or an end cap, that serves as that. Uh, and then just hold it down with the landscape staple. Now that inevitably leads to the next question that is popular with drip or without is uh, how long, how much do I water? How long do I leave it on? In, in terms of drip. And my answer really doesn't change. And that is, it depends on weather, on your soil makeup, uh, and the size of your beds. And you're gonna have to figure that out through trial and error, just like I did, just like everyone else does. And to do that, you use the finger method. We all know that by now, right? Push it in about two inches. If you feel moisture, it's good. Uh, now, for your drip, I have to say I am actually experimenting right now with it because 
Um, I think I had it on too much and then I switched it. Now I think it, I have it on too little, especially with the heat we're having. I would say a good start would be about 15 minutes every other day. And on the second day, before it goes on that second time, do the finger test and see, is it still wet? Is it completely bone dry? And adjust from there. Uh, I had mine in the winter almost off, but I had it down to about five minutes every other day. And that was about, that was good for us. We didn't have a lot of rain and we never do, but it really is just a, an experiment. It'll take you a couple weeks, three weeks, maybe even a month to get it right but then you'll know what you're doing. So the finger test works for everything. Okay, so the next subject, uh, several people asked if this, if drip would work with a rain barrel or some kind of rain collection system. Now, like I just mentioned, we don't get rain at all here in the summer and in the winter, it's not enough to really even try to catch it or put the expense and time into that. So I, did some research and I found some information for people who have, and it's probably, I don't know how many of, how many of you have rain barrels? Let me know in the comments. But if you do, and you wanna hook your drip system up to that, I have a link down below the video in the uh, video description area that's gonna take you to a professional answer on how to handle that. Okay, the next question was, can I use a splitter so I can also use a hose? And that's pretty much, um, you know, you've got one hose spigot coming out of your house or out of the ground. And if you put your timer on there and the entire system, you're gonna have to unscrew that every time you wanna use a hose. And so, yes, in fact, in the front yard, I have a Y connector that hooks right onto the spigot. And then the spigot stays on all the time. And then the little switch on the, the hose side of the Y, I turn on and off and I leave the drip system side on all the time. And then the timer handles it from there. Okay. One of the questions was, how are all of my beds connected? I showed you going into one bed, but then what about the others? Now I have two different stations for my vegetable beds in the back. So the two nearest the house are on one station and the two or the three, the big ones out toward the fence are on a separate line. But between each bed, I have a half inch tube all the way down the back of the beds capped off at the end. I have a T connector underground. It keeps the line straight all the way behind all three beds. And then that third prong of the T points up and I take the line up from that long line and into the bed. A lot of people asked my view on soaker hoses versus drip. And this is a subject that I feel very qualified to talk about because I used drip um, soaker hoses for many years. Uh, they are easy to set up. You just screw them on, snake it through the bed and you're done. The problem I found with soaker hoses and I never found a solution is it always seemed that the part of the hose nearest the water source. So at the beginning, uh, did fine, but it dried out toward the end of the hose. And if you were to leave it on long enough for the end of the line to get uh, moist enough, the beginning of the line was flooded. And so I always had problems with that. I even cut them in smaller pieces, had them coming off of PVC, and I just couldn't ever get it to work. So if you've got it working, great, stick with it. Uh, if you haven't tried either one, I would suggest drip. It's much easier to control. Now, one thing that I am not uh, well versed in, so I really can't give an opinion, is my opinion between drip tape versus drip tube. I've never used drip tape. I've only used drip systems for two years. And so if you have some comments and you, if you've used drip tape, or especially if you've used drip tape and drip tubing, let us know down in the comments what your thoughts are on that, pros, cons, um, I'd like to know too. So a couple of people commented on um, the fact that I looked like I was using two different brands of pieces in the drip system. And I am. I have used pieces from Dig and I have used pieces from Rainbird. And I haven't found any issue with that. But some of you were saying that there's a slight size difference in certain pieces that can cause uh, leakage, um, hard 
to get it together. Um, I might have noticed a little bit of toughness getting it together when you're crossing two different brands. I haven't had any leakage yet, knock on wood. Uh, but if you're starting from scratch, uh, maybe play it safe and only stick with one brand, if possible. This next question is something I should have covered because it's one of the reasons that I didn't start drip for so long. And that is how many quarter inch tubes can you set up on one line? And it's not so much about the tubes I've learned, it's about the holes. And so you have to do a little math. And so if you wanna get technical, and I know there's a lot of you out there that do, I am not a math fan, which you can probably tell by looking around my garden, I'm more of a right brain person. But basically um, a half inch tubing can carry up to 240 gallons per hour. So if you're using a two gallon per hour emitter, you need to do the math on how many, uh, so that would be what? 240 divided by two, and that would give you a total of 120. So you could have 120 two gallon emitters. And so look on the tubing that you buy and see what, what's, what gallons per hour each of those little holes put out. And if you wanna count the holes, great. I just wing it. I have not, I look for the, the system to slow down, for there to be inconsistencies. I haven't gotten there yet. And in the jungle garden, I've got quite a few tubes and holes running around on one line. So if you wanna do the math and you're that kind of person, awesome, do it. If you're more like me, just wing it, put it together and figure it out <laughs> once it happens. Now I did have a problem with the three beds and I'm not sure why. The first bed nearest the water source would always get wetter than the last bed. And so that's why I installed the, uh, the inline valves on the back of the three beds, not only so I can turn a bed off if I need to, but I can also adjust the flow in each of the beds. So that first bed, I reduced the flow, the last bed I left it open all the way, and the middle bed left it in the middle. So that brings me to the next question. How many lines or timers do you have? So I have four lines in the backyard. I have one line or two lines for the vegetables and fruit. I have one line over here in the jungly gazebo area. And then I have one line in the rest of the jungle out on the other side by the lawn. In the front yard, I've got one line. I need to put in another one for the other side of the driveway that's got the tomatoes and the uh, three sisters bed. Right now I'm watering by hand and that's causing more problems. I've got a lot of blossom end rot in the tomatoes and uh, the rest of it's doing pretty good. The three sisters are doing pretty good. But I do, I do have to put that in because I'm gonna be putting, doing the edible landscaping over there starting uh, in the spring. And so I will be putting that drip in probably in late winter and I'll take all of you along because I know a lot of you said that's when you're gonna be putting your drip system in as well is in the late winter or spring. So we'll be able to do it together. Okay, next question. I installed drip, but the ground always looks dry. Does drip work by itself or do you have to water with a hose also? Well, that would defeat the entire purpose, right? We're trying to save ourselves work. And so, no, you do not need to water with a hose. Drip is efficient because it delivers the water right where it's supposed to be, and that is at the roots. And so if you were to take a cross section of the soil while the dripper is going, what you're gonna see is a very small area at the top of the ground that has water. So literally within an inch sometimes of the drip emitter, it's all you're gonna see on top of the ground. But the deeper it goes, the wider it spreads out. And so kind of like a triangle. So you may not see the top of the ground being moist, but if you use the finger test, you will feel it. Now there are times, two times actually, that I will use a hose in addition to the drip um, or a watering can. And the first time is when fertilizing. Now they do have something you can put into the system that you put your fertilizer into, concentrated, and let it rip. Goes right through the drip and you're done. Now that involves math and I am a right brain, like I said, but I'm also type A. And so I want control and I want to make sure that they're getting what they need. And so I, I do it manually with a watering can. Now, if I ever get a bigger garden, 
that might have to change. But for now, I, I, that's one time that I use a hose or a watering can. Now, the second time is when I'm sowing small seeds, like carrots or lettuce. You barely cover them. Sometimes they're just sprinkled on top of the soil. Drip is not going to keep them moist enough. And so in that situation, I will hand water, hand mist the soil until the seeds have sprouted. And once they're, they're sprouted and they're up, they have a tap root that's going down and is going to be able to tap into that moisture. Big seeds like squash or corn that you're pushing down like an inch or so into the soil, those are most likely going to be totally fine. The drip will be able to handle those. It's just the small seeds that I worry about. Okay, the last question before our uh, giveaway winners is, is there anything you would change or any mistakes you made when setting up your drip system? Uh, yes. So the first one I, I talked about already, I put the valves on the back of the beds because there was a flow rate issue between the beds. Um, so that fixed that. And then if I had to do it over again, I would probably put all of the containers on one line and all of the beds on another because uh, it's easier to control that the containers in the winter don't need as much water and in the summer they need more. And so I just kind of have to hit a middle ground with everything. So that's one thing I would change. The other thing I would change is in the beds, because it's a large area and the tubes are about nine inches, nine, nine feet long that have the emitters, I would also run the half inch tube. It goes across one end and all those tubes fit into that, right? I would also put a elbow on the end, run the half inch tube all the way down to the other end of the bed another elbow and have it run across the other end. And instead of goof plugs at the end of all of those emitter lines, I would put a coupling on them and plug them right back into the system. And what that does is that gets the water very evenly dispersed throughout the bed because it, the pressure of the system fills up all the way around and it's feeding the entire bed from both ends. I hope that makes sense. So those are the two things that I would definitely change if I had to do it over again. Okay, that's all the questions about drip. And now it's time for our three giveaway winners who will win the Wise Orchard timer. Now, the way this is going to work is I'm going to name the winner and where, where they won from. And I will, within the next couple of days, contact those winners through the medium which they won from. So if you won on Facebook, expect to get a Facebook message. Instagram, same. And a, in YouTube, I will probably comment on your comment that you won from. So keep your notifications available for all those three so you see if you won. The information that I will need from you will be your mailing address where you want the uh, product sent and a phone number. And I will not sell that information, nor will I crank call you. But Wise Orchard needs that information to get the package delivered to you. So here we go. I'm going to start out with YouTube first. Drum roll. All right. Our winner from YouTube is Mike Scott. Set it and forget it sounds nice. It is nice and you are going to love it. All right, Mike. So like I said, watch for a uh, message and reply to this one in the next day or two. All right. Instagram. Our Instagram winner is Bailey 2966. I have to have this in my life. Well, Bailey, you will have it in your life soon. Okay, our Facebook winner is Colette Cementi. Hope I pronounced that right. Awesome tips and incredible instruction. Thank you, Colette, and enjoy your Wise Orchard timer. Okay, that's our three winners, and I'm sure I answered every drip question you could probably think of. Probably not. But anyway, I will see you guys Sunday. Enjoy your weekend.